Hi everyone, this is Professor Chuck Wood coming at you again from Duquesne University. We're uh, discussing interview questions that you might run across in your security interviews. Today, we'll be talking about uh, the uh, disaster recovery uh, interview questions that you might run into. Okay, the first question are, is when are the incident response plans and disaster recovery plans developed? And the answer is before you start opening up your site on a network. So many people think that uh, you open your site and then you wait for the hackers to come and then hackers inside your company try to stop them. That is not true. It's a management issue. You start these plans at the, when you, before you open the network, you have to plan what will happen if your network is breached. Who do we call? What do we do? What do we want to protect? Okay, so in, in, in that sense, the the very first step of establishing a network is developing the plans that will happen once your network is breached. Okay, the second question is, what is the severity level of most of your hacking attempts? So you have a hacker and he does get into your system. What's the severity level? And the severity level is typically called an incident. Okay, so most of your time as a security professional, you are tracking incidents that happen before they become disasters. So someone hacks into your system, immediately, hopefully, they are detected. Who they are, what their motivations are, what data are they trying to get, all that is, is a, a put together to see if they can figure out exactly who it is and, and uh, what they want before they get it. Okay, this is called an incident. So many people think that disaster recovery uh, and business continuity are what the hackers are that the uh, uh, security professionals are trying to implement when in fact most of their job is responding to incidents before they become disasters. Okay, the next question is what is remote vaulting, disk shadowing, and disk arrays? Okay, remote vaulting is this idea that you have some data and eventually you electronically transport to another site. Okay, so that is uh, uh, typically the least safe way to do things, but it is cheap. The second uh, uh, method is disk shadowing, where you have another disk that constantly receives information from the first disk. So while this disk is running and web surfing and, and trying to uh, 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 keep up to date with all the data, all that data is being electronically transferred to another computer behind the scenes. So that way you have a backup. Often the disk shadowing is also dated. And then finally, what is a disk array? A disk array is when you have multiple disks in a system so that if one disk fails, you can take that disk out and replace it and you won't lose any data. Even when the system is running, you can remove a disk completely and the system won't stop, won't slow down typically. And, and you can put a new disk in and a disk, new disk will be automatically be uh, initialized and in use without you doing anything. This is a wonderful thing to have because mistakes, bad things do happen and this will prevent a disaster. Okay, what is business impact analysis? Okay, business impact analysis is the idea that you don't want to secure everything. I know that sounds odd, but you don't want to. You can't. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, if you had a billion dollars ready for security, you probably still would run out of money. Uh, so your, the idea is, what is at risk, and what assets are at risk, what business processes are at risk, and how do we secure those business processes, and what's the impact of those business processes, which ones do we want to secure? If it costs $500,000 to secure a, a, a business process, and you make $100,000 off that business process, it's not worth securing. So you're going to just except that you have to get hacked on certain systems or you're more likely to get hacked because it's not worth the cost of securing. And believe it or not, that's a hard decision to make, but that is a, the way you should be managing the system. Okay, and then the finally, what's the difference between cold, hot, and warm sites? A hot site is day-to-day -day exact duplication of uh, what you uh, have in your production environment. So if you go to work every day, and something happens to your work environment, you could go to work in a new place and it'd be up and running from 
uh, that morning you leave your office and go to your other site that afternoon and you'll have an identical work environment. Uh, so this is called a hot site. They're kind of expensive to set up because they're ready 24-7 for you to move in. A warm site is the, the idea that you have some computers identically configured and some software that might be installed on those computers, but the data typically isn't, so someone has to get the data and install it on those before you use it. And then a cold site is you just have power, maybe some computers, maybe not, but some, just power, light, light water, uh, and that is it. So something you have is to your building, you spend the first part of the day, the next day, setting up the cold site so that it can function. Okay, so which site do you use? Depends on how much money you have and how much money is at risk if you have a discontinuity in operations. So the whole point of disaster recovery and business continuity planning is to keep the business running at a reasonable cost. Okay, so anyway, uh, that's it for this set of interview questions. Thanks for uh, coming in, and don't forget to subscribe to my site. Also, we have some Amazon books uh, available on this topic coming out or already available. So go check out my, my books on Amazon. Thanks for the links below. Bye.